Alrighty, people. Thank you once again for joining me on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. I'm Ryan Thomas coming to you live from one Buffalo, New York. And this podcast is for all the dum dums out there. For all the dum dums that just do not understand the dynamic of the quote unquote fight game. Daniel Cormier, the UFC heavyweight champion. Daniel Cormier, the UFC light heavyweight champion. Unprecedented history. We are almost a week removed from this unprecedented history. Normally, within a few days, I like to move on and and, and discuss other topics and approach things from a different angle. Um, But I'm approaching things from a different angle within the same topic. Within Daniel Cormier being the now heavyweight and the light heavyweight champion of the UFC. It's painfully obvious, as I alluded to earlier this morning, that Daniel Cormier will never, and I repeat, never, ever, fight in the light heavyweight division again. Currently, he is the light heavyweight champion, but that title will be vacated at some point down the line. I I would bet money on it, and I would win a lot of money on it. That he will vacate that belt. I do not see him fighting Shogun. I do not see him fighting Volcan or Gustafson again or any of the other guys that are at 205 pounds. He's proven his point. Furthermore, he's proven his point that he can't beat John Jones at light heavyweight, and John Jones has proven that he can't beat John, that he can't beat Daniel Cormier clean, and that he can beat Daniel Cormier at 205 pounds. So, in case you've missed it these last few years in the UFC's existence, the UFC is in a market to make money. That's what every business should do, especially a business that sold per, sold for $4.25 billion. The UFC sold for $4.25 billion back in July of 2016. They need to get a return on their investment, WME, IMG, and they need to sell better pay-per-view numbers. They need to reach better pay-per-view goals. And this DC versus Brock Lesnar fight, in my humble opinion, is a fight that is perfect for the next one. What I mean by that is Daniel Cormier taking on Brock Lesnar. My Fantasy Sports Talk's own Brandon Reed asked me on the My Fantasy podcast in terms of the competitive the competitiveness of the fight, the competitiveness of the quote unquote bout is, is slim to none. You know, I kind of retorted and said, "Well, it is MMA; anything can happen. There is that dynamic." But do I think Daniel Cormier beats Brock Lesnar one hundred percent? Do I think it's a tougher fight than people think? As well, 100%. But nonetheless, I do see Daniel Cormier beating Brock Lesnar when they do fight. And you know what else I see? I also see the aftermath of the Daniel Cormier-Brock Lesnar fight selling large amounts of pay-per-views for the... As a, well, I should reword this. I see Daniel Cormier and Brock Lesnar selling a lot of pay-per-views as a precursor to the next massive, massive pay-per-view fight. And that is Daniel Cormier versus John Bones Jones at heavyweight, not at light heavyweight. We've seen Daniel Cormier and uh, John Jones fight at light heavyweight two times. One time was a loss for Cormier. The other was a no contest due to the fact that John Jones tested positive after the win in which he got his light heavyweight title back. We know the light heavyweight Cormier versus Jones fight. We've seen it. But a heavyweight Daniel Cormier versus John Jones fight adds a lot of new intrigue to the third and final fight in the rivalry. Daniel Cormier is arguably, especially now, to be a much stronger, more powerful fighter at heavyweight than he was at light heavyweight. John Jones has flirted with the idea of moving up to heavyweight throughout his entire career. And as reported by John Jones' manager, Malki Kawa, Jones stated that he will get to kick Daniel Cormier's ass at both light heavyweight and heavyweight. 
That's the only leg that this fight has to stand on. DC versus John Jones at heavyweight rather than DC versus John Jones at light heavyweight. Think of that. Think of that as wheels in perpetual motion. DC versus Brock Lesnar, big money fight for DC. DC's the A-side of that one, although Brock is a big name, but DC's the A-side. Gives DC the push that he needs for what is the actual biggest fight in UFC history to date in Daniel Cormier versus John Jones 3. Granted, Cormier's 0-1-1, but that was at light heavyweight. New intrigue in the heavyweight weight division would be DC versus John Jones 3. Then you also have... A fighter that retired at UFC 210, Anthony Rumble Johnson, who Chill Sonnen is very, very tight with. And he's heard that Anthony Johnson wants to come back and fight either Daniel Cormier at heavyweight or possibly finally make that fight with John Jones at heavyweight. Let's say, really looking at the crystal ball here, let's say that Daniel Cormier and John Jones fight at heavyweight. Jones wins anyway, which I think he would because... His style is just too dynamic for Cormier to understand, it seems. Jones is such a smart fighter in there. Let's say that Jones wins, and then we see Jones versus Johnson at heavyweight, as opposed to light heavyweight. New intrigue in the heavyweight division, to say the least. Something to think about for the dum-dums that still do not understand DC versus Brock. And no, I'm not referring to Brandon Reed. Brandon Reed, I is, I know for a fact, is a smart dude. He gets it. He understands it. But the people on my news feed, people that are commenting on my article, DC versus Brock, Desperate Times, Call for Desperate Measures on MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Check that out. There's been comments on Facebook. People don't understand why this fight is happening. Look, it's the preview, the precursor to the actual biggest fight in UFC history. DC versus Jones 3 at heavyweight. That is if John Jones is not suspended for four years, obviously. Take care, everybody.